I'm in SPSS uh, looking at the car depreciation data set and I want to do an analysis of variance where we do have a significant difference between the groups so that we can look at multiple comparisons. Uh, and this is probably one of the more ad advanced topics and if it's getting too much for you then you can just skip over this for the moment and just keep on using your your interval plots, that is the the plot that shows the mean and the confidence interval to look at the difference between the groups. So what I have here is um, the car depreciation data set which we looked at for correlation and there's a couple of interesting things in here but I thought what we would look at is the price change so this is how much the car has dropped in price based on the transmission type so the question is does it does the transmission type automatic manual or semi-automatic have any relationship to how much the price changes. Now there is a small problem with the way the data set is set up at the moment in that uh, SPSS will not look at a string variable when you're doing your ANOVA even though it's in groups and this is quite frustrating so what we have to do is recode it. Now this is not the same with all stats packages, Minitab you can just chuck anything in and it'll, it will do it. Um, but SPSS won't. So what we have to do is code transmission from being a string into a number. Now it's not that hard to do but you will have to follow the menu options. So we want to go to transform and we want to recode transmission into a different variable. Now I would always advise that you do recode if you were doing any recoding you do it into a different variable so that you don't lose any of your um, data if something goes wrong you always want to be able to back backtrack so you don't want to do it into the same column so it just means it's going to take the code and put it in a new column. Um, now I'll have to delete everything so that I can start from scratch so I want to take my input variable which is transmission and I want my output variable to be and I'll call it trans2 because I've already done it once just to check that it would work and we'll give the label transmission. And you've got to click this change or else it doesn't show up. Now you can see it there. Now what we have to do is give it the old and new values. Now I've already done this so you can see that they're, it's populating this already but what we have to do is type in what the old value was and you'll have to check the data set if you aren't sure but the old value was manual and you need to get the capitalization correct because it will look for exactly that and we want the new value just to be zero and then you add that in and I've already done these so I've made manual to be zero, semi-automatic to be one and then automatic to be two and we need to remember what, how we're coding it because if we want to go through and put the the values in and the labels in we need to know which number is which. So you put your old value, your new value, click add and it should give you a list of all the transformations it's going to do. Um, continue that's just says it hasn't I haven't added the last one that's okay because I already had it in there and okay and now it's popped up with a new variable called trans2 it's now a numeric variable um, the label is transmission and this is where I need to go in and put in my value labels so 0 was manual 1 was semi-automatic and 2 was automatic. Now it doesn't matter here if your not labels are not exactly the same as the original um, data set because it's not looking for these anywhere else. This is just what's going to pop up on the graphs. Okay, so we'll do a quick chart. We'll have a look at um, a box plot and what I would want to look at is the price change so that's how much the car has changed in price over the last well since it was bought and since it's been re-advertised so the price drop in most cases and the difference is in and I've got a couple of transmission variables here but let's pick the last one that I just did transmission okay So there's quite a lot of variation in this data set and we can see that there we've got some unusual observations. The bulk of the data is quite 
tightly packed in, but then we have a large um, a large number of outliers for each group. Now, if you remember back to the descriptive statistics back in, I don't know, week two or three, one of the things that we looked at was skewness and the other one was kurtosis. And I think you'll find that you'll find that this data is what we call highly kurtotic. But that's a, a more advanced term and you don't have to use that. And it's something that's quite hard to fix. Um, so let's do the graph again, but I just want to look, instead of looking at all the data, I just want to look at the means and the confidence intervals. So instead of looking at all the data, which is quite messy, I just want to see the mean and the confidence intervals for each of these groups. So it looks like the automatic cars have dropped in price a lot more than the manual and the semi-automatic. There is no overlap between the confidence interval. Um, we can draw a reference line in here. Let's take a look reference line to about 19,000, minus 19,000. Let's take it up a little bit, minus 18, 1, 2, 3. Now this line is fairly arbitrary, but it just gives a visual clue that there is a separation between these, these two confidence intervals. Um, that'll do close enough. So now we can clearly see that the automatic cars have dropped in price more than the other two. Now if there was a little bit of overlap here in the confidence intervals, they may still be significantly different, but it's just a little bit harder to tell from the graph and we really have to run the test. And when they're completely separate, then we can see from the graph that there's a significant difference at the 5% level. So let's run the analysis and then we can look at these multiple comparisons. So compare means one way ANOVA. Now I'm interested in the price change and the factor is the transmission and we have to use our recoded one because the string variable is just not going to show up here at all and that's why we have to go through that process of coding it into being a number. It's still nominal, it's just coded as a number now. Um, leave the contrasts. Now in post hoc for the uh, hand grip data set I said let's have a look at the Bonferroni and the two keys but it just gave us way too much output so I think we'll just stick with the two keys so that we don't have to look at quite so much. Continue. Okay so the null hypothesis for the analysis of variance is that there is no significant difference in the average price drop between the different transmission types for this data set. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of the groups is different from the others. We have a very low p-value which means that we have very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and therefore we have very strong evidence that one of the groups has had a different price change to the other groups. And we already know what that is because we did the graph first and often it's easier to interpret the output if you know what you're looking for which is why I do these confidence interval plots. So now that we know that that the automatic is different, it's come up as a significant difference, we can have a look at these multiple comparison tests just to see what it's doing. And you will see these um, published quite frequently in papers. So the post hoc means that it's done after the analysis and the multiple, multiple comparisons is because we're comparing each group with each of the other groups. Now we've got two tables here. This second one is actually easier to understand so we'll look at this first and then I'll go back and explain this table but if you don't want to use it that would be fine. So where it says homogeneous subsets, what it's doing is it's putting the variables into groups that are the same as each other. So if we look up at this plot here we can see that it does not look like there is any significant difference between manual and semi-automatic. It looks like they could have the same uh, true mean price change. And down here we can see that it's put them into the same group, manual and semi-automatic. So when two levels of a factor fall into the same subset with your multiple comparisons, it means there's no significant difference between them. However, 
automatic is falling into a group by itself and that's because the automatic is significantly different from the other two even though these two are not different from each other. So this graph, this um, table is just putting the numbers on what we could already see up here with this plot. Now the multiple comparisons here goes through and it compares each level with each other level and it puts a p-value on it. So in the, the test, the null hypothesis is always that there's no difference. So the test here is that there is no difference between manual and semi-automatic. We have a high p-value so we have no reason to reject that. So we can say that the manual and the semi-automatic could have the same true mean. And that's what we can see up here. Manual and the semi-automatic could have the same true mean. Then in the same box it's comparing manual with automatic and here we've got a very low p-value so there is a significant difference between automatic and manual. And then this is where the, the multiple comparisons gets quite repetitive. We can, I think we've already got a handle on what the difference is but the software will just go through and calculate each of these p-values for every single comparison. So it's done manual versus semi-automatic, manual versus automatic. Then it picks out semi-automatic and it says, OK, semi-automatic versus manual. And we've already done this once because we did it up here. And you can see that the p-value is the same. So it really doesn't need to do it again, but it does. And then semi-automatic versus automatic. Now we haven't done this one yet because those these two were the same, in the same column up here. So semi-automatic versus automatic gives us a p-value of zero. So there is all very close to zero. So there is a significant difference in the price change between semi-automatic and automatic and we can see that up here. Very significant difference between the price change of semi-automatic and automatic cars. And then it pulls automatic out and compares automatic with the other two levels but we've already seen these comparisons before so by the time you get down to this last box you really don't need to read any of them. So just to recap what this multiple comparisons is doing it's pulling out one level from all the levels and we've only got three levels in this case and it compares that one level against every other level to see if there's a difference and then it pulls out the next level and it compares that against the other levels every time it does this it will be repeating part of what it's done before until you get down to the bottom and it's already made all these comparisons before it really would be helpful I think if SPSS didn't um, give us all the the values twice so if I um, copied this and let's go into a new word document and paste that in. We've got ma manual versus semi-automatic, manual versus automatic. Semi-automatic versus manual, we don't need that because it's done that row already. Okay, delete it. Semi-automatic versus automatic, okay that's new. Automatic versus manual, well we already had that up here because we did manual versus automatic. So we don't need this line here. Automatic versus semi-automatic, again that's already been done up here. So we can go through and delete that. So <coughs> if you are using these tables, I suggest you go through and delete um, what you don't need just to make it easier to read. And so you'll see really there's only three comparisons there. If you have four levels, like for the arthritis, we had the four levels of arthritis or you had five or six levels, hopefully you can see that these multiple co comparisons are going to get longer and longer and longer and more tedious to read through and so often this is the least helpful of all the tables it's only helpful if you actually need a confidence interval around the difference uh, usually this one is easier to look at because we can see that these two are the same and this one's in a group by itself and this um, table here goes well with this and this is how we can visualize the change so that's multiple comparisons. So if you find that there is a difference, significant difference between the groups when you're running an ANOVA, the next step is then to find out what the difference is and we do that through the multiple comparisons and you can visualize that through the graph 
and if all these multiple comparisons are just too much to wade through then just do the confidence interval plot um, and hopefully you can pull out what the interesting parts of the, um, the data set are through that.